dear students today we'll be talking about uh, dyeing of textiles in the last video that i presented to you uh, we have talked about the basics of dyeing that is uh, what is dyeing so let us recall some of the facts which i have discussed with you in the last last video see i started with basically dyeing what is dyeing so as you all know by now that dyeing is the process of thorough coloration of textiles in which we are thoroughly dyeing the textile material with your coloring materials and then there is one more process called printing in which we are having localized dyeing so the, if there are some basic differences between, between both of them uh, in that is dyeing and printing in the first case that in dyeing we are having thorough coloration and in printing we are having localized dyeing so after that we have talked about the the textile can be dyed in three four basic forms like uh, we can do dye textiles in your fiber form textiles can be dyed in your yarn form textiles can be dyed in your fabric form and textile can can also be dyed in garment form then i told you two more things about textiles that uh, dyes can be applied to textile materials by two methods one is by exhaustion and the other one is by padding by padding through continuous processes uh, generally used is your uh, exhaustion uh, wherein we are having four basic steps this we also discussed in the last class last video in fact uh, that in the first step we will be bringing dye liquid to the fiber surface and then we will be having adsorption on the fiber surface and then after adsorption there will be diffusion of the dye molecules inside the structure and at the last step that is fourth one we are having the fixation step in which the molecules will be fixing inside the structure so that the color fastness properties are not affected adversely see whenever we have uh, dyed any textile product there are two three things which customer wants they are literally unaware about the technology which is being employed but as a consumer also what we people want is this that whatever garment we have purchased from the market whenever we wash them the color should not go away all right color should not go by sweat color should not go the tanger drying it in sun all right that is color fastness to light color fastness to washing the time you are washing them color should not bleed it should not fade so these things are very important these needs to be overcome so for that thing to happen from that point of view these stages about dyeing process are to be understood in a proper way the way fixation happens even a single dye class the fixation will be different for different type of fibers for example if we talk about drag dyes in that case drag dyes can be applied to cotton in a different way and then the, when the same drag dyes are being used on say fibers like protein fibers like nile uh, this like your wool or silk the scenario will be very different altogether so this we have to keep in mind that fixation step will vary from fiber to fiber based depending on because every fiber has its own peculiar structure so the interaction between the fiber and dye will be different for all there will be different mechanisms i think we have already studied about this in textile chemical processing uh, that we are having uh, in some cases we may we may be having covalent bond in some cases your uh, dye will be getting inside the structure with the help of your uh, this wonder wall forces and in them some cases you might have this electrovalent bonds in some cases you might have covalent bonds so these are some of the ways by which your dyes will be getting inside the fiber structure so again uh, one more thing which is there is in this is the dye size also will going to is going to play important role see the time we are talking about uh, polyester fiber the polyester fiber is very compact in structure 
and dye molecules doesn't go get inside that easily. That's why we cannot use the normal dyes classes available with us. So the only um, thing that is available with us for pearl dyeing of polyester is dispersed dyes, which have been made likewise with size whose size is very small. Fiber size is very small, and those fiber those dyes are to be trapped inside the fiber structure at a at very high temperature because the structure opens up at very high degree temp at very high temperature. So these are some of the technicalities which are very important. Uh, See, so in addition to this, we also talked about pretreatments which are imparted to textiles in the last class. The pretreatments are going to play an important role. It will be more clear to you when you study in detail about the dyeing of textile materials. Although I just touched that it is very important the, the, the level of impurities which are there, they are going to play a vital role. And then the level of uh, impurities that, that, have, that have been removed. Because ultimately what we are doing in these pre-treatments is that we are preparing the fabric for your even dyeing to take place. Why this even dyeing? To ensure that the fastness properties are on better side. We do not want to dye such a fabric in such a way or your fiber or yarn or garment in such a way uh, that customer complains that a fiber uh, the color is bleeding from the fabric or uh, a number of chemicals are available in the market these days which can cause an adverse impact on the garment that is highly un undesirable ultimately customer is looking for these things for him it doesn't matter what type of dye, dye class you have, that you have used for a layman for a customer all that customer wants is all that consumer wants is that color should not bleed it should satisfy his, his requirements so we have to think about those things we have to think critically about the preparation that we have done about the level of impurities that we removed about the cost of the product again which dye class is to be used and where uh, because you'll find that garments ranging from if you talk about say simple shirt so the shirt I'm wearing it may range from say, 200 rupees to 2000 rupees both of uh, all the shirts will be made up of say cotton in every shirt you'll find that's made up of cotton so what is the difference obviously there's a difference in fiber varieties there's a difference in the properties by which the shirt has been made or uh, there may be properties say uh, GSM is going to play an important role in that what is the fabric GSM and then uh, the type of dyes that have been used the type of finishes that have been applied so that dictates the price of the product the type of pretreatments the type of chemicals that you have dosed in so all this is going to play an important role that's why the concept of dyeing is very very important uh, be it in your fibers be it in your yarns be it in your fabrics be it in your garments that's why we have been uh, talking about this slightly in more detail. So once these things are clear to you, then we are going ahead with dyeing. What is dyeing? What is the requirement of dyeing? How we need to do it? That ultimately what we are doing in pretreatments. See, and then once we have come to that ultimate dyeing step, how do we do dyeing? I have introduced you the concept of coloring materials in the last video itself. It talks about uh, that we are having uh, dyes, we are having uh, ingrained dyes, and we are having pigments. So, while restricting ourselves to dyeing part only, you will find that uh, we are generally using dyes only to dyeing for the dyeing of garments, or in general for the dyeing of textiles. Pigments are used for printing, they are being widely used in print and printing but uh, they are not used in dyeing as such. If you talk about ingrained dyes, yes they are being used, they are aseric dyes, they are uh, part of your, uh, they, are, they form this category of your, uh, uh, much broader category of what we call their ingrained dyes. So limiting our discussion to dyeing only, we are dyeing textile materials with dyes only. The next important topic is 
the various dye classes which are available with us. The classification of dyes. See classification, what type, type of dye classes are being used to dye fibers. In the first instance, uh, we have uh, we have also studied in, in this in earlier semesters. Just to recall, uh, we have drag dyes, we have reactive dyes, we have wet dyes, we have sulfur dyes, we have dispersed dyes, we have metal complex dyes, uh, we have basic dyes. Lot of dye classes are available with us, available with us. But see, the selection of a dye for a particular type of fiber that's very important that's very crucial so let us take an example for example I to uh, say if we are interested in dyeing of cotton so what are the dye classes which would be used for dyeing of cotton that has to be understood generally if we talk about cotton we are generally using drag dyes reactive dyes, wet dyes and sulfur dyes and in this four dye classes also the most widely used are your reactive dyes and wet dyes. These two are the major classes which are being used to great extent in dyeing of uh, cotton textiles. See as far as the country like India is concerned we are having a large production of cotton in the country so we are using a lot of cotton based products especially if we talk about summer is, as our summer is approaching so the first resort of all the people is to use cotton based textiles and for dyeing of that we are generally going ahead by these four dye classes so this is what we intend to cover today in this lecture